uh, you're very clear, aren't you, that you are a trans woman. Uh, you were born male. You mean you are still biologically a male uh, and, and will be for your entire life because that's what you were born. But you live as a woman, and we are absolutely, you know, very happy for you to do so and respectful and empathetic, etc. But the law in Scotland wants to go a lot farther, doesn't it? It wants to actually go down to 16 year olds being able to do this, but also this idea that there is no. In no way is there a, a, an expectation that people need to have gone through any medical or psychological process to get to the point of legally changing their gender. Do you agree with that or not? Oh, <laughs> no, uh, no, I don't agree with 16-year-olds um, being allowed to legally change their gender, whatever that may mean. What, what is that? Um, Why not? We don't allow... Well. <laughs> What is the point? You, if you're 16, if you're 16 years old, you don't. You're a completely different person at 16 to how you are at 18 to how you are in your 20s. Uh, I think all of this, this whole idea of changing, changing gender, whatever that may be, um, is 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 fallacious. I think the 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 whole idea that you can even change sex is fallacious. To pick up on the points you made in your very generous introduction to me, I don't think that I'm any form of woman. I know exactly what I am. I was born male and I'm an adult male, so I'm still a man, as is every other trans woman, self-identified trans woman on the um, on the planet. And I think that the law really should recognise that as a fact rather than some fiction that people believe in their head that they can be something that they're not. I think imposing these ideas on young people is extremely dangerous. And I think like things like uh, like smoking and alcohol consumption and anything else that's um, that's fairly challenging on your body, that this this sort of activity should be reserved for people who are adults and able to make yeah. some sort of reasoned and informed judgment as to what is going on. Yeah, it's I mean, not... as you say, we all, we've all changed an awful lot in our teenage years. And again, I think the rest of the country, and I certainly don't want votes uh, for, ch for children at 16 either. Uh, I think every, all of these things should wait to adulthood. It is interesting that, you know, that, that uh, Nicola Sturgeon doesn't think that 16-year-olds uh, are, are old enough to have a drink or uh, or have a cigarette, but they are old enough to, to make these sort of really life-changing. And in some cases, when you have surgery and treatment, uh, body-changing, uh, uh, life-altering decisions. Um, it's interesting, some of the things you've said there, would be categorised by many, certainly on social media, and perhaps by a lot of uh, sort of virtue signaling MPs in the House of Commons yesterday, uh, as transphobic. The you, Miranda Yardley, trans woman, that you are transphobic because you don't believe that a man can become a woman. Yeah, it's great, isn't it? Well, if you look at the uh, definitions of transphobia, trans this allegation of transphobia is absolutely empty. It's it's meaningless. We have uh, in. Uh, probably n nobody outside of the culture wars have noticed LGBT plus Labour have been doing some sort of consultation on transphobia and this statement has been banded around again, it's, it's been going around for a couple of years, and it's been banded around again, um, giving a long list of things that are transphobic and you might as well just say pretty much everything is transphobic. It's just another way of shutting women up and as we could see in the House of Commons last night and I think uh, it was Ben Bradshaw and Lloyd Russell Moyle, mm. uh, they are repulsive men. I have to say, the way they treat shouting down Rosie Duffield, a prominent campaigner for women's and girls' rights on the Labour side, being shouted down and, and treated very, I mean, absolutely disparagingly. And I'm very disappointed the Communist, uh, the Communist Deputy Speaker didn't step in and, and stop that, uh, I have to say. And I think uh, anyone should see that video, uh, which you see just how, how disgusting this is. But this is the thing. Um, this is, for most people, this is about, well, there's a devolution issue, which Nicola Sturgeon is trying to draw up, and we'll talk about that with political uh, guests later in the show. But there is also just women's safety issues the idea that someone can say they're a, a woman in particular when they're actually a biological man into changing rooms, women's prisons, other safe spaces, at 16, you know, girls' schools, girls' toilets in schools. These are, these are issues that women have a right to speak out on and a right to be concerned about, aren't they? Yeah, absolutely. And as we saw in the House of Commons last night, we have men doing what men have been doing for millennia, which is telling women what it is to be a woman and then attempting to move the goalposts. <laughs> And the I, I I'm absolutely convinced this this whole thing is manufactured to try to uh, create some kind of um, constitutional conflict between yeah. the United Kingdom and Scotland, and it is the it's the last gasp of a political party that has absolutely no remit and absolutely nowhere to go. Um, right.